This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Do you drive a vehicle? Then you'll find AutoCorrect helpful, especially on Coach Charlie's Tip of the Week. Listen to our podcast with me, Coach Charlie Melton, on any podcasting platform or on the MPB Public Media app. From MPB Think Radio, this is Fix It 101, the home improvement show to help you do it yourself. I'm Jason Klein here with Pam Pibus, ASHE certified inspector at Inspect It Like a Girl and licensed contractor Jeff Sammons from Houseworks. And uh, have you been checking off items on your summer maintenance checklist? I don't know who really does that. Well, okay, Pam. Me. Yeah, Pam. <laughs> but one of the things that's about to happen this time of year is Mississippi. Wood rot is coming. If you're not paying attention, it's going to be there. And as Java pointed out on the script here, it can ruin your deck faster than termites. And and actually, I've seen that myself. <laughs> I've stood on a deck that fell under my feet before because of the rotting piers. What is there's a month that is deck safety month? Do you know what that is, is there Jeff? One? Is it like June or something? we got to look that up. I've never heard of it. Yeah, Deck Safety Month. Maybe it's only in the inspection world that they talk about that. But, yeah, there are a lot of injuries. Really? Lots and lots. Uh, May is Deck Inspection Month. Well, it's Deck Safety Month. Yeah, You you missed it? In May. You missed it, so go outside and... Uh, Get it all done real quick. (laughs) Run around. Um, Oh, I did want to say, if you want to join the conversation this morning, you can send an email, fixit101 at mpbonline.org, or you can go to the public media app and go to the Talk to Us section and just send us a two-minute note of any sort you want, or video. That'd be fun. All right, so uh, did you get anything into anything this weekend, Jeff? Uh, Let's see. What did we do? Um, You polishing the bottom of the boat or anything like that? (laughs) No. No. All that's over. Um, We went to Monroe. Yeah. Louisiana? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. uh, Nice. Yeah. yeah, Java? You you were fixing something? Yeah. I actually got into a little something, uh, a brand new dishwasher. So I had to pull the old Uh, one out. Oh. Aren't those fun? Um, I uh, installed the new one. I, I got big and bold because I did the last one all by myself. But right. this time I had to call my dad. My dad had to call his friend. <laughs> oh, uh, man. It became now, a family now, project. <laughs> Java, I, I have one question for you. Do you have a disposal? No, I do not okay. have a disposal. Okay, okay, okay good. Because <laughs> there's a there's a hose when you have the disposal right. that has to go up over the dishwasher. Yeah, right. And uh, otherwise, all the stuff in the disposal ends up in the bottom of your dishwasher. The dishwasher, and then there's a plug. You know, right. on that drain. That's if right. you don't knock that plug out, you're gonna have Nothing's some big gonna problems. Happen. That's right. <laughs> and if you, yeah, well, true. Yeah. So, 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 did you guys have to like do new power or new? <laughs> well, we thought we were gonna have to do new power because um, after everything was hooked up and it was not it would not turn on uh-huh. but what ended up happening the breaker was tripped um, when you were working well, pulling we were, the old one yeah, out or we were something pulling and then um, we just had to go back outside and flip the breaker it only took us one Lowe's trip one big box store trip and um, nice. and one YouTube video so one, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a yeah, that's a gold star right yeah, there. Yeah, that's a pretty good day, man. Mm-hmm. Really. Uh, usually now we've said it on the show before, three trips is the norm. You know, you got to go get the stuff that you assume is going to do it. Mm-hmm. Then you go back cuz that didn't fit. Now you don't have quite enough to finish the job, so you got to go get the the last bit and go back. And then you have all the stuff left over. That's yeah. when my dad's friend came in because we thought we were going to have to go back to the store, but <laughs> then he came over and helped us out. So that's say it was no, like it, one and a half trips. To so the I got to I got to I got to ask now because I've uh, I've kind of followed this story. Was he the guy that walked in and flipped the breaker and said, there you go? No, he didn't flip the breaker. <laughs> what happened? Um, what happened was. No, right. I forgot. It was one of the. Um, Oh man, one of the I guess bolts that 
we had to unscrew mm-hmm. um, to attach something. And it's just think of it like this. There were four bolts, three of them unscrewed easily. Mm-hmm. Right. And then there was the, like the, the, one. the last that one. one. The last right. one. Where we needed like mm-hmm. 600, 700 pounds of pressure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, too. so it took all three of you to turn that screw. Right. Just that much, so yeah. But it was a, it was, it was fun, and you know, it's it's all done. Did my first load a couple of days ago, and no leaks. Good so for you. Okay. Right. Yeah, I, I have to tell you, I in my house, I think you may have heard probably a year ago, we got a new uh, dishwasher in my house, and this was a big deal because we had like this nice like a uh, nice dishwasher in the house for a long, I mean, many years, and it finally kaput on us. Then wife orders a new dishwasher online, has it delivered, never seen it, never opened it, nothing. And it performs exactly like that. You would expect of never seeing the product. It's terrible. (laughs) It's the one that goes into every apartment in the world. Uh Oh, it, it is that brand and everything. Is it loud? Does it sound like there's a train coming it, through the Anything you can think of is, you know, if you go and buy a dishwasher and you ask for a particular feature on it, this one does not have that feature, I can assure you. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, it's the very base base. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, when I started looking at dishwashers, I did a lot of research. And one of the things that I got, and I've talked about it on this show before, mine wouldn't start either. It wouldn't, well, the it had power. But it wouldn't run the cycle. Well, come to find out, there was a drip pan underneath the water connection. And we hadn't gotten that water connection tight, and it was dripping. And so it had a float switch on it. So it wouldn't come on as long as it was leaking. Oh. And I was like, that is brilliant. And that's what that's the same thing with this one um, that we got. Um, I had to connect that. That what you just was talking about. The little float switch on uh-huh, it. Uh-huh, because it would beep and it would be on, but nothing would happen mm-hmm. until it was connected. And I guess that's why, like mm-hmm. you said, it's going to stop if it starts to drip. What an awesome feature to have yeah. on a dishwasher because, you know, you don't know it's leaking if it's, un, you know, it's under right. the cabinet or, or whatever. And one of the things that we do in home inspections is that we're always looking at the adjoining wall. Oh. So if if I run a dishwasher and we run the dishwasher, I'll go to the opposite wall. Now, if it's on an outside wall, obviously I can't do that. But what I can do is get down with my really nice police-issued fire um, flashlight and look at the, the baseboard and base trim on either side of the cabinet. And if it's puffy... There's probably some water in it. Interesting. <laughs> and we do that on ice makers and refrigerators. Ice makers. Ice mm-hmm. makers should be thrown into the street and run over. They really should. They I just, just uh, I'm so frustrated with ice makers. Put them in the garage, people. <laughs> Put them outside where they will not cause damage. You know, damage. I grew up with ice trays, mm-hmm. and I'm really, really considering that now mm-hmm. because of the just the frustration of the ice maker. I've, I don't know how many refrigerators I've had in my life. I know that probably four of them have had ice makers, right? I think I've never, I've never left a place where the ice maker worked. I've only got there when the ice maker worked. worked. Yeah. I turn the one in my, on my refrigerator, it is off. There is no ice maker. Really? And the, no, mm -mm. and I did it for that very reason. And I've inspected too many houses where the line behind the refrigerator's leaking and you don't know it until you got a catastrophe. Like I did a house one time. And, you know, these people were talking about what a great house it was. And I got in the crawl space and the refrigerator was getting ready to fall through the floor because it had been leaking for so long. Huh. And I was actually there for something totally different. I came out and showed the owners. I said, did you know? And they looked at it and they, their eyes got <laughs> yeah. real big. But no, I, I disconnected my ice maker and I bought a little countertop. It's called an opal. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I use that. It, it work, works pretty decent. It's, it's pretty decent. And yeah. so, and it makes, the, I, I tell you, it makes the sonic ice, the tiny little yeah. round. Now, it, it won't keep ice, but it makes ice. But it makes it. Yes. And so oh, what okay. I do is I make ice at the beginning of the week, and I put it in my tray, which is my ice maker tray in my right. freezer, and it works great for the rest of the week. And I love it because it's kind of, you know, I love those tiny little cubes. Right. Yeah. You know, it's not the big well, ones. It's the little teeny tiny, you know, tiny your, ones. Your, your standalone ice makers... They don't. They don't keep ice either. It's not a freezer. Mm-mm. It's an ice maker. So that ice is constantly dripping, and and going into the drain. Into the drain. Yeah, because it is not a freezer. 
It is a it is a ice maker, and that's why you'll hear it discharging the water right. on exactly. a regular basis huh. because it's kind of coming down. And I tell you something. The the way we have drained those ice makers, they have put in been put in wrong. <laughs> well, I, no, I agree with you because if you know if you're building if you're building a new house and you know you're going to do a standalone ice maker, uh-huh. put in a drain. Put in a drain. Do do not do not put the pump in to pump. Now if it's if it's retrofit, you can you can buy the pump. Right. The problem with the pump. If the pump quits, mm-hmm. you got water, and it doesn't have a limit switch to the ice maker. Ice maker, it, it's going to flood you your house. You're going to come home from the beach, <laughs> right? And have to call Jeff because you need all new wood floors, right? <laughs> well, you know, we said this. We started this, by the way, Java. This was you. You know, we don't have Timmy on the show. However, to help us out. Carol is on the line in Ocean Springs, and she's got a dishwasher not draining. Uh oh. Right, row. Am I right, Carol? Yes, that is correct. We just started doing this um, in the last two cycles I've run. Does this mean I need a new dishwasher? Or no. how do I find somebody to repair it? Okay, two different questions. Um, it's probably the sump pump on the dishwasher has gone yeah. out. And, I, you know, I recently had an experience with a freezer where it went out and I called the appliance guy and he comes over and he says, well... I could put a new, I could re- put new refrigerant in on it, but you could go buy a new one for what you're going to pay me. Mm. And I'm assuming that probably the sump pump on that, because you're going to have to pull it out and then replace the pump on the back, because what it's not doing is not pumping the water out once it goes through the cycle. Hmm. Right. You want a cheap one? I got one, Carol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it worked very well. But what's, what's the age, Carol? It's old. It's probably fifteen years old. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's time. I, I would. I would. I. I. I think I'd get a new one. Mm-hmm. Really and truly. Yeah. Well, really, I, even finding the parts on a fifteen-year-old unit would be a little tough. Maybe. You can. And but. Carol, so that you know, uh, we've had you know appliance repairmen on the show, and pretty much modern appliances have a shelf life of about seven years, and dead uh, and. And that's and if you get more than that, you it's got your bonus. money's worth. Yeah, it's a yeah. cherry on top. If right. you get so you had fifteen years, I bet you'll be amazed if you get a new one about how clean your dishes will well, be. That, how, <laughs> how quiet uh-huh. the, the new ones the are. The new ones are just you don't even uh, know. No. Like mine, I'll be walking through the house and I'll hear something and I'll it, it'll be a bump or whatever, yeah. and I'm like, oh yeah, I turned the dishwasher right. on because you can barely hear it. Yep. Man, I wish I had y'all's dishwasher. Mine sounds like diesel. I bet. I mean, it's, I bet. Well, it, there, there's a price point now. Mm-hmm. Right. There, there's, they're, You're think, probably looking things at... Things are expensive. A, I, I would say $1,000. I was going to say 1000 1200 on a good wow. one. On a mm-hmm. good one. Yeah. I mean, you can get one for 300 bucks, and, you know, talk to Jason about his experience with that unit. But, right. you know, if you want something quiet, and really the reason that they've gone to that is these open floor plans. Because if you put That's a dishwasher right. in an open floor pan and you're trying to watch the football game, it's going to irritate the heck out of you. You know what I have found, though, Carol, between the, the, the higher end washer that I had before and this kind of lower end washer that I have now? I, I, Carol, I almost want to just go ahead and wash the dishes myself mm-hmm. because by the time I open the thing back <laughs> up, I have first of all, I have to dry everything out. Because the new washer does not dry. Right. Exactly. Uh-oh. Okay. Right, right. Um, and, and, and it, it's like I have to touch every single thing again to dry it properly and to make sure everything's clean. It's not even worth it. Go ahead and spend a little bit to get the right dishwasher. I would that, say that, you know. too. I tell you what I don't like about some of these high-end models. They're talking to me all the time, singing. Like they, the do 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 whenever it, you know, anytime you like it that? changes. No, I don't. Hush. <laughs> Just shut up and do your job. Do you shake your fist at kids in the yard? Do 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Carol, thank you very yeah, much I'm for that calling. Lady. Uh, I think the answer <laughs> is you. it might be time to shop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On the line right now, I want to go ahead and talk to John and Hernando. He's got an experience with uh, dishwashers and have some advice for the previous caller. What's going on, John? Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, this is John. Um, I was just listening to the person who called in reference to dishwasher, and you guys are talking about it's probably the pump at the back, you know, the, uh, the drain pump. Mm-hmm. Um, I've I've looked at these um, over the years, and invariably, especially if you have one that hasn't been looked at for a number of years, but there's this drain filter system in the bottom of the 
dishwasher. And because people don't don't even realize it's there, over years it clogs up, and that will inhibit the pump's ability to actually drain the dishwasher. Good point. I think, yeah. I picked a few of those. So 10 minutes work would save you 1200 bucks. So, so okay, so you're saying, uh, is this the thing that I, I've worked on my dishwasher also. Is this the portion that is down at the bottom that collects all the food and all the other stuff? Correct. It's normally in two or three parts. You have to unscrew it slightly, take the whole thing out, and you, you'd you be amazed the gunk. In actual fact, people are shocked when they find out what's in the bottom of it. So this is, all right, so when I open my dishwasher, I pull out the little the wire trays. thing, the trays, and and <clears throat> if I look down in the bottom, and it's got that little propeller thing, which is where the water spits out, right, on the bottom, that spins. Yeah, you won't, yeah, you won't, well, you won't, probably won't see the propeller, but what you'll see on top of it, there's a basket, and if you un- unscrew that, it's only like a quarter of a turn, pop it out, look underneath there, you'll see a, another filter element, and that's normally where all the debris from, you know, the dishes, et cetera, because people just throw everything in there. They right. don't bother scraping the food off. And that's it a good, like, yeah, you, know, you could that. try that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, it, yeah, it's worth a try, definitely. Mm-hmm. I've done it once before, and I did suction out that stuff with a wet dry vac. Mm-hmm. And, and I'll say, John, it, it, it was it was the kind of stuff that you would suck out of, like, the bottom of a dishwasher. I mean, the bottom of a, uh, a a clothes washer or anything. It's just, it's funk water. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's yeah, awful. It is, so. it is awful. It's feel like looking in a top of your septic tank. Right. right. Yes. <laughs> do I need to have a mask on when I do this? <laughs> well, you know, she's going to be doing this as soon as she gets home now because she's afraid it's there. Uh, so. No. I, <laughs> you know, I'm kind of one of those people that, and my, my uncle worked for GE for a million years, and he used to say, why are you renting off your dishes before you put them in the dishwasher? And I, uh-huh. I don't know. I just, I've always done it. So I right. get the, I get the debris off before I stick right. it in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, that is a great heads up and tip. Yeah, Thank you very tip. much for the call, man. Ho- hopefully Carol's listening and she'll get that. All right. I uh, got uh, one comment here from an email last week from Diane. Pam should have a garage sale. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> actually, Pam has con- is contemplating having, uh, yeah, I was, I'm actually starting. That's what I did this past weekend. Because the humidity was down. I don't know if y'all noticed that or not, but for someone who works outside all the time, I was like, there was a breeze that came in sometime Saturday afternoon, and Sunday morning was just delightful. So I got out in my shop because Jason had made fun of me last week. Sorry. And I started looking at all of the things that I could offload and maybe even sell. And so, yeah, yeah, I'm actually... Thinking, I'm pondering. All right, Diane, that possibility. get your get your cash app ready, Diane. She's coming. <laughs> All right, so uh, I got an email here, and I just felt felt for these folks. So let me give you, gents and Pam, my ranch style home, conventional foundation, circa 1960, needs three things done. My wife and I are both public school teachers, so money is tight. I was wondering in which order we should address these issues. Um, number one, our textured ceiling in the kitchen is showing some mildew, which I'm sure is related to number two, the fact that our attic insulation needs to be reblown. The attic is in good shape, no roof leaks, etc. And number three, our hallway bathroom. We have a bit of rot in the baseboard and drywall behind the toilet that is creeping into the subfloor. I feel certain I can do the ceiling repainting myself, and I know uh, and I know the bathroom is a bit above my pay grade. Do you think I can tackle the insulation myself? I'm a pretty big dude, and our attic crawl space is tiny. Thanks, Jamie. Ooh, well, Jamie. yikes! For, I, I guess I guess uh, all of these things are absolutely DIY, DIY projects. The thing that might not be is what's causing all of this stuff. Well, I think. Um, that they have some, probably some heat and air leakage. I mean, I would imagine for some something's reason, causing it. So, yeah, it's not, it's not the lack of insulation causing the mildew on the ceiling. Mm-mm. Okay, Mm-mm. that uh, would happen up north. Some, yeah, Down something here, I... is getting wet, in my opinion, or we've got some leakage in the ductwork, and we're getting condensation. Mm-hmm. Um, All right, so, for these two, so I would look at that. 
Uh-huh. Now, can you do it yourself? Yeah, you can go to the big box store and rent the little blower thing right. and rent the, I mean, buy the cellulose and spray it. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't think that's the issue yet. It may be an issue, uh, but I think right. there's I think there's a few more layers to this onion. Now, your bathroom, my opinion, uh, we have a leak at the um, at the stand. at the water closet um, mm-hmm. valve, mm-hmm. either in the wall or outside the wall. Yeah, or it could be a wax ring seeping yeah, but, that is yeah, coming going down to the subfloor. And- yeah, could, yeah, yep. Okay, I will buy that. That's a possibility. Or the tank bolt. I've seen that happen yeah. before. And then a lot and, of water. And listening to listening to their description, that's probably a little above the hammer grade. Probably ought to, you know, right. get get a handyman or somebody look at that. Well, I was thinking uh, probably, and this is the this is the dumb thought. You know, the non pro thought is, I, I think you're right. Is it, it's a little above pay grade. So if nothing else, at least someone to look at it that is in the pay grade to tell you things that you can yeah, do yeah yeah in you other know, words you, you a, could a real all... contractor looking at saying no it's not your roof don't waste your time right. and money on that uh put your money over here you could yeah. always take some paper towels and put down i'm back on the commode now right. put some paper towels around the base and see if it gets wet put some paper towels under the under the valve see if that gets wet huh. you know um well, another thing you can do, and, and we do this all the time, depending on where you are, and he didn't, J- Jamie didn't tell us where, hmm. where he was located. We do what's called a component inspection, and we'll go in. If you actually, I was out in Clinton last week helping a lady because she had particular problems in her house, and she gave me a list, and I went through and mm-hmm. helped her diagnose what the problem was and who to call to handle that particular problem. Yeah. Right. Now, what? Wh- how much does that cost? It's uh, two, like two forty-five an hour, and okay. that includes a, a diagnosis and a written. And you can right. ask whatever you yes. want now, to. See that? That's that's money well spent. Um, you know, because it, it's going to cost me something to go out there, mm-hmm. even even if I tell you I'm going to give you a, a free estimate. Right, right. I mean, there's no such thing as a free estimate. It's costing somebody something. So to hire you for 200 plus an hour, bring it on. I get a written report. Right. Give that, you know, evaluate that. Can Can the average homeowner handle that? If not, give that to your contractor and... Let them quote it. Well, then you can find the correct people because we don't know exactly. It sounds to me like, and I'm going to agree with Jeff, a 60-year-old ranch or a house from Mm -hmm. the 60s. Yeah. That is 60 years. It's his conventional foundation. (laughs) It's been a minute. It's on conventional. So are you dealing with problems that are... We don't know. Is it an air conditioning issue? Is it a plumbing issue? And you want to find out because if not, you'll spend more money throwing your solutions at problems that aren't even there. And and, and to speak to the first thing, I think, Jeff, you said it, uh, that the 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 first thing that he says, our textured ceiling is showing some mildew. Right. Points me straight to HVAC. I mean, if well, it's on the I mean, or surface. recirculating vent fan above. Right, right. And if you have a gas range with a recirculating vent fan, you're going to have junk on your ceiling. Period. Huh. Okay. In 1960, that's a possibility. Yeah. It's, a, yeah. it's a very strong possibility. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, because all you're doing is throwing water at your ceiling with that recirculating vent yeah, yeah, every true. time you turn your gas range on. Right. Well, I think. Um, let's see. So, Jamie, I know uh, money's tight on the on the on the smaller budgets. I would say your best money spent is on someone who knows what they're doing. By if nothing else, to have someone out and look. Yeah. You know, just Absolutely. to have someone out because what, uh, as Pam said, you don't want to throw a thousand dollars at something that, that you didn't need. It ain't to even do. a problem. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was working with a lady, uh, last week who had these weird, um, mildew prints on her ceiling. And it had been coming up and she wanted to get it painted. So what I did is I, I went out there. Well, come to find out, in her vaulted ceilings, there was no insulation. Ooh. So it, 
it, it was it, it kept coming back. She'd clean it off. Right. And it would keep coming back. And it's going to keep coming back because that wall was condensating because of the air conditioning. And sure enough, she had had her air conditioner re- uh, replaced two or three years earlier. Right. So now the air is cooler and it's hitting that um, that wall. That surface. Yeah. That surface and causing this uh, mildew. So it was an easy fix. Get a handyman over there to put bat insulation in the raised walls. Right. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. You're listening to Fix It 101 on MPB Think Radio. I'm Jason Klein with Pam Pibus, ASHI Certified Inspector at Inspect It Like a Girl, and Licensed Contractor Jeff Sammons from Houseworks. And if you missed any of today's program, you can always listen back by podcast using any podcast app or the MPB Public Media app. So on the line right now, we've got Susan, and she's in Hattiesburg. And what is this, what is this filter thing you got going on, Susan? Well, I have a well at the house. And um, there was sort of some, some build up around the little uh, screens in the sink sometimes. And somebody said, well, do you have a filter on your well? So we oh. get a filter put on the well, and now the water doesn't taste as good. It just tastes different. And the well person said he had the water tested, and it was fine. That was before the filter. But I'm just wondering about these filters and what they are and is there i don't know is there paper in it or i got you so why why doesn't it taste it like it did before Uh, it's filtering out all the minerals that used to make it taste better right (laughs) now it's filtering now it's just water filtering out all the bad stuff (laughs) right i don't know much man I, i don't either you know i've i've had um i had one well that when we bought the when we bought the place in the country and it was we didn't use it anymore because we had uh, not city See, water county right, water or right. whatever out in the country water right <laughs> and um, so I, man I know nothing about a well yeah, I, I really don't yeah I'm not sure what that filter is uh, Susan I'd put a million dollars on the fact it's not paper because yeah, that wouldn't like last in water yeah charcoal type right. some some uh, you know it's I, a tall I, cylinder I, I use Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Some of them, like my buddy up in Canada has like an osmosis type thing because they drink the water right out of the bay. So it goes through this Ill, pretty elaborate system. Oh, yeah. Right. Reverse you know, osmosis. Right, yeah, yeah. To, to kind of get it in. And boy, that water tastes good. Can you get to that filter, <laughs> Susan? I'm sorry, what? Can you get to that filter? Like, is that something you can change? Well, I mean, he said he will come and service it every two years. Uh huh. So I, I just don't know. I yeah. wonder, you know. I'm wondering if it took something out of the water that you were tasting that it now doesn't. Yeah, it's filtering some something iron. out. You could research that yeah. filter it's and kind of see. Yeah, it's not putting anything in the water. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. it sounds like what you were having at your fixtures were mineral deposits. And so, and that, that just happens when you're dealing with well water. It's going to have that. Um, you know, I did a, uh, this isn't going to help you at all, but it is a good story. So (laughs) I I was doing a farmhouse out in Bolton last week and I went in and they're not there very often. It was over a hundred years old and they had totally redone it. Mm -hmm. It was, it was cool. And I went in and when I turned the tap water on, it was almost black. No way. I mean, it was disgusting. Huh. So <clears throat> I'm going through, and they put in new air conditioning system, new insulation. Um, and I went in, and I opened up the closet where the water heater was. It was a three-year-old water heater, and it was completely rusted out at the base. No. Yeah. How? Why? Yeah. Probably mineral deposits. And when it wasn't being used, and you're not circulating that, right. the anode just got completely ate up. And, of course, I smelled the sulfur. Uh huh. Well, do you get a sulfur smell, Susan? No. Okay. Did you have it before the filter? No. Okay. Right. I just had a little bit, sometimes, of a pink sort of deposit around the drains. Yep. And he said that's probably iron. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Whenever, um, you know, I lived down in the Bellhaven area a million years ago. I worked at the college and lived over there. And we used to have pink, and they told me it was because we were so close to the treatment plant. 
and then it was causing, oh. you know, and all all the girls that lived in my dorm who had blonde hair had green green mm. highlights. No, because <laughs> <laughs> of the chlorine yeah, in the, the water. Yeah, chlorine. Right. It was such a high chlorine content because we were so close. But I don't know. If I were to take a, where would I take a water sample? So just straight from the tap to make sure that it's all right. Yeah, I would. That would be right yeah. there at the tap. No, no, she said, uh, no, where where would she take the water? Yeah, where? Oh, oh, uh, MDEQ, mm-hmm. Mississippi Department of Environmental Qu- Quality. Did you just hear me slur through that yeah. whole thing? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. hard to say. You know, th- Have another drink. Jessica. This is what I think I would do. Mm-hmm. I, 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 think, I think I would get my water sample with the filter, and then I think I would get a sample with no filter. Right. That's a good idea. You, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's and, a great um, idea. Now, I'm going to say this, and it's the obvious, but mark the bottle because I'm going to get two samples and not mark it and think I can remember which one is which. That's so a good point. Get, right. get, your, gotcha. get your Sharpie ready. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great okay, idea. Well, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. All right. I wish we'd be more. Thanks, I Susan. I know. I know. We're shooting in the dark on that one. Do look up MDEQ online. Yeah. Yeah. They're awesome. Yeah. They're M- awesome. They'll do some testing for you. Yeah, point and, you in the and right probably direction. Probably no charge, I yeah. would think. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. MDEQ, Mississippi Department of Environmental Quality. Because I know, like I get water reports. I live out in Ridgeland. Mm-hmm. And every year I get a water quality report in the mail telling me. Right. That yeah. They're, I don't yeah. get that. Maybe they don't want to tell me. Yeah. Yeah, you don't. Maybe get it's not good. We get it. Um, I'm on Bear Creek, yeah. and and I, I I get a report. Mm-hmm. Every year they started doing it. Well, it hasn't been the whole time I've lived there, but when you're on a well, you don't get that. So there's certainly there's a place you can take water. Maybe a listener will right. know right. where you can take water if you're on a well to get it to get it tested. Yeah, but I love a Jeff's heart. idea. I think that's an awesome idea. Right. All right, uh, let's uh, let's get Julie has sent in an email. She says, hi, I'd really like to be a DIYer, but some power tools make me nervous. Is there an alternative to using a Sawzall? Mm. (laughs) I I need to remove various sections of one by six wood around exterior around the exterior of the house and replace. Thanks, Julie. Um, uh, mm. For the for, I'm not talking about the pros here. The pros might tell you something different. Sawzall is one of the is one of the hardest tools to wield out there because it, it takes really, a lot of strength and really stability. Is. And there's a technique. Yes. yes, yes. And and but but there are different things. And one thing that I think could be of use in this situation might be a multi tool. That's well, what I was, I was thinking. I was thinking that. Mm-hmm. I like that. It's going to be slower. Mm-hmm. Um. But I don't think the caller is looking for speed. I think they're looking for safety. Yeah. And, and, and it's going to be much safer. Much safer. And you buy the little different blades. You can yeah. get something like if you've got nails to cut the nails. Mm-hmm. And then there's a wood. And, yeah, it's a lot easier. I love and Julie, my you can tool You can get one of these multi-tools. Um, of course, you can, you, can, you can spend as much money as you want on it. But if you get one that's like plug-in corded multi-tool mm-hmm. that's a 30 dollar tool yeah there's not much yeah, to it they're not yeah. real expensive no. but they're now, don't, awesome don't 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 look for speed now because it's going to be slow right mm-hmm. and and you um, know sawzalls is is it is the biggest hammer you can come with you can uh, cut a, a car in half with the, a sawzall you don't necessarily <laughs> need a sawzall for everything no yeah the problem with the sawzall if you don't know what you're doing you're going to get kicked back um, if your hand slips off of it, you're going to cut yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, problem with a skill saw, you're going to get kicked back on that. So, and the blades are I long enough uh, the, on skill saw. Yeah, or cir- let's call it a circular oh, saw. A circular, circular okay. saw. Uh, yeah. So I don't like that. Uh, I don't like the sawzall. A jigsaw, I don't. I don't like it's. I think it's down to multi tool. Yeah, mm-hmm. multi tool. Look for that. And I know it sounds goofy. Like the, there can't be just one multi tool, but the folks will know at your local hardware store what you're talking about if you go in and say, "I'd like to see the multi tools." And you know, I bought your your point to a skill saw. I do not use my full size skill saw. It's probably going to go in the garage sale. Yeah, mm-hmm. because it's it's just too dangerous for somebody. That doesn't have the strength, but what I did buy mm-hmm. was a three and a half inch circular like those. saw. Those yes. things are great. I yep. love it. Yep. I absolutely I like love them. it. It's small. It's got a grip on the front. It's lightweight. It's lightweight. So and I will use that. And it's enough blade 
to go through a two by four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've used them before. Yeah, and if you're, <laughs> it sounds like she's wanting to pull off like fascia boards around the house. Mm-hmm. You could use that. It will give you a little bit of kickback. So I, I would say if you get that, I would try using the multi tool first. Right. Okay, I'd go for a multi-tool. Got a couple of summer questions here, emails that we got in that I wanted to get to before before the show's over. Um, Dear Fix-It 101 experts, I have skylights over a wall that I use to display artwork. I know the light isn't good for the art, but can y'all advise a type of protective film I can put over the skylight on the outside to protect it? Uh, there seem to be very many types of film for windows, doors, etc., and I don't have a clue as to which would be best for my purpose. The skylights are flat surfaces, not bubble-like. So, uh, thanks, John. So, these, I guess, are the skylights in the ceiling, you know, that, that uh, and he's using that light mm-hmm. over these things. I, I know that uh, the window film that I've been... Uh, I guess someone's tried to sell me a window film before for my dormers yeah. in, in my house. And I do know that you can get them with that, that have all the filters that you might want. The that, UV, yeah, 3M uh, UV right. type, but you can't put it on the outside. That's going to well, peel I mean, off. And, why couldn't you use um, what you would tint your truck windows with? Yeah, the that's same what I was thing. Yeah. You can buy yeah. that in any and big box store. Yeah. I've done that on my windows on yeah. the front of my house, and I love the effect. Oh, but yeah. it, it does go on the inside. It's got to go on the it? inside. You can't do it on the outside. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, but but you can buy that. It is the uh, – it was the uh, – what are we trying to – the the rays? UV. UV. Thank UV. you. UV rays that we're trying to get. And most – a bunch of film, almost all of it, is going to say – UV protected on the front or an Yeah, it, it'll yeah. tell you how much. I'm going to tell you something. Putting it up on a skylight is going to be hard. You're going to be sticky. <laughs> I mean. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I mean, I did that on a uh, horizontal surface. I uh-huh. can't imagine trying to do that over my head. Really? Oh, man. That's okay. going to be a mess. You're going to have that stuff all. You're going to have sticky all over you. I'd hire a professional to do it. Now, if you don't care and you're okay on a ladder, go for it. Yeah. Maybe some scaffolding that day. But what you do is you have to, with the, with the stuff that you do at home, it comes with a solution. So you have to spray. You have to get the surface very, very clean. Uh-huh. Then you have to spray the surface of the window and spray the surface of the film, then peel the film off, and then put the film on there. If you're trying to put that over your head, yeah, you're gonna have point. you're gonna have that spray and that stickiness all over yourself. <laughs> Ooh, John, you know what you need? Hire some nineteen year olds. <laughs> yeah. And let them do it. Let them do it, and then it'll look like crap. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> you got to beat great. that one out, but I mean, it's going to look bad. All right. Uh, one more email here for you. Okay. Uh, I have a west side bedroom that is offset from other rooms and gets hot in the summer. What can I do? Air condition, pergola, outside, or what's the cheapest and best? Also, gets high humidity scent from my, uh, uh, it also gets highly humidity. Oh, okay. Uh, that didn't make sense, but that's what she said. Anyway, thank you, Debbie. Uh, you know, 10 years ago at my house, we had the same problem, planted a tree. It's awesome now. Yeah. Uh, you needed to do that 10 years ago, though. Yeah, best time so, to plant a tree? 30 yesterday. years ago. Right. <laughs> um, but if you don't do that, you know, the pergola, I thought, was an interesting idea. Because the tree itself in, in my house, we literally planted this little tree 10 years ago that we were just hoping because the same side of the house just got blistered in the afternoon sun. Well, we put this tree up, and that was the whole point. And it, we had to wait. But this that pergola sound kind of neat. Yeah. Well, you could go old school and just put an awning over it. Well, I was. That's what I was. That's what I did. Yeah. I just built a frame and used old metal and made this nice. Oh. Look, and I ordered yeah. the hardware online and created or, a, an awning. Or you could go new school and do a plantation. Um, a shutter. A shutter on the outside. Mm-hmm. And close it. Yeah. 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 That direct sun coming in from the west, it can be brutal. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, we may want to apply some of the strategies that we got with the the uh, the skylight guy you to could, this. And that's what I did. There are a couple of things that my house faces west. 
And so the first thing I did that wasn't cheap is I built a front porch because the house didn't have one. And uh-huh. now it's completely shaded coming into those windows. Well, I was still getting some glare. So I put the film on there. Oh, cool. And then in my guest bedroom, which is also facing west, that mm-hmm. got incredibly hot because at one time it was my office. Right. I built the awning. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, real quick, we got another call in and some advice for that skylight issue. Jesse's on the line in Mobile. What's going on, Jesse? Hey, Jess, how you guys doing this week? Doing good. What's going on, man? Okay, in San Antonio, my sister had a similar house that the skylights were vertical, and afternoon sun increased a good 20 degrees of the air in the great den. Yep. So my mom had me up on the ladder putting up window film. Now, 3M created clear window film for all the California art districts where you could have a giant window, but the UV rays stayed out and huh. didn't damage the art hiding on the wall. So 3M clear UV window film, but good luck getting it on a flat surface. If it's got <laughs> lights are flat or angled, you're going to need some help or a scaffold rental unit. But they do make the clear if you don't want to lose any light. They want to keep your artwork from being damaged by the UV rays. Okay. Oh, Man, Jesse, you yeah. just made somebody's day. Yeah. Well, he's still it, saying. It, well, I it, mean, it, you didn't take any yeah. of the labor out of the process. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm well, hiring somebody hey, for that job. Let me ask you, Jesse, have you actually yeah. done it? Have you, you put in the window film. Was it as difficult as Pam says it is? I was a teenager back then, so you didn't really know what difficult was. Your mom right. told you to do something, and you knew you couldn't say two words. Right. Not doing it. His mother, yeah. his yeah. mother told him to get up there. Right. Get up, get up and there. He was, and put he that was scared film. to say no. Yeah, yeah. Find you a. Of course, now teenagers will look at you and go, "Not doing that." Who you want me to call? In the window fan. <laughs> yeah. And everything just slides around, and then you squeegee the water out, just like you see on car window chants and. Yeah. You're really not worried about cleaning the window like car windows because no one's ever going to see how bad the dirt is on the window you're putting the film over. So wow. Someone's going to climb a ladder to inspect it. Yeah, they're yeah. not looking up right. to, to see. But, yeah. yeah, you start squeegeeing that water out, it got to go somewhere. Clear UV yep. 3M film. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad there's a product. It's the, same, it's the same one they use on the front windshields in, in sunny states like Hawaii. Or if you have a state that doesn't want you to put any tint on the window, uh-huh. on the on the on the windshield, then they use a clear tint and don't tell anybody they put tint on the window because it's clear. Okay, because it's clear. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I've seen that. And you know that um, they actually like storefronts and these with the big windows and stuff. They're putting that on there, and they actually market the commercial part of this. They market it as a safety. And a secure thing because you can't break through it. When you put the film on there and somebody tries to bust the window, it won't go through. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, that's extra. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Jesse, thanks for the call, man. We really appreciate it. Um, it, it go ahead, Java. Yeah, I was just going to say, I know we're running short on time, but we did get an a email, and it was about some uh, tank water. Oh, give me. Okay. All right. This is from uh, T. Coleman. My question is, my wife and I have well water. I had to replace the tank a few years ago, and me not knowing any better, I bought a bigger tank, which I found out later I didn't have to. I believe my old tank was like 40 or 50 gallons. My newer one is like 80. Whoa. I like to have good. <laughs> water pressure coming through the faucets but after a while um, the water running the the pressure gets low and it's basically because the tank is using all the water in the tank and once empty the pressure switch will kick on and then the pressure and water will start back and then it's just same thing after using so many gallons of water thinking I may have a uh, my water pressure switch set wrong any ideas? Huh. A water pressure switch mm. on a water heater. I'm just not familiar with What's that. It, are they, no, are they uh, default no, set? No, no, he was talking about a well. A well, yeah. yeah. The tank, There apparently there's a holding tank on a well. And again, this is out of my, it's out of my wheelhouse. Um, okay. Uh, so if, you, uh, if you're listening and have an answer to this, 
uh, holler. You, you know what? Send an email. Talk to us feature. Ooh, the talk to us. Go to MPB public media app, then go to uh, the menu and talk to us and pick Fix It 101, and you can send us a message of any sort, audio, video, whatever, up to two minutes, and we can figure out that answer. Yeah, because when you're talking about a well, that's a totally different thing, and I always go back to mineral deposits, and because that is not public water that supposedly they filter all that stuff out mm-hmm. but a well doesn't have that and it will do some damage to the inside of plumbing components if not monitored carefully okay all right uh yeah we're definitely going to need a little, little backup on that one so if you want to give us a uh, an email at fixit101 at mpbonline.org. Maybe we could research somebody who, who does that and have them come on the show. And I think mm. from the layman's point of view, he tried to go bigger is better. No. Right. From yeah. 40 to 50 to 80. Right. 80, man. You spend <laughs> some money to heat that water. All right. <laughs> Fix It 101 is a production of Mississippi Public Broadcasting Think Radio and is funded by generous contributions from listeners like you. Our show is produced by Java Chapman and engineered by Abram Nanny, but not today, with podcast production production by Abram Nanny. Our call screener today is Abram Nanny. For Pam Pibus I'm and uh, Jeff Sammons, I'm Jason Klein. Stay tuned to uh, our Wednesday 10 a.m. program, Everyday Tech with Jay White, and join us next Wednesday at 9 for Fix It 101 only on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android 